Hey guys, great to be with you again here for our weekly webcast for the Saab community, the only webcast for the Saab community on the internet that I know of. I'm Lee Kelso. I'm Mark Romisher. And this week we're actually having a guest who was with us at the Saab Owners Convention and had the pleasure of sharing a vehicle he recently got off of Bring a Trailer. And this particular vehicle has a little bit of fascinating history behind it. Yeah, it sure does. And, you know, Bring a Trailer has been really interesting, a place to go and watch uh, lots of interesting cars go through and uh, sobs, of course. And this is the one that we're going to be telling you about, a 1975 Saab 95 wagon combi uh, that brought a big price, uh, possibly a record price for Saab. But mm -hmm. Mark, you and I were talking just a moment ago. There are some cars out there on Bring a Trailer right now that are looking pretty snazzy. Absolutely. So right now I'm bringing trailer. There is a 2001 93 Viggen convertible that's currently at auction for 12,500. It has six days left, only 35,000 miles on that one. So a lot of people are excited about that one. We actually have a 1988 Saab 900 SPG, which has 297,000 miles on this thing. Imagine. It's had a new engine put in it. I mean, it have had extensive work done to it, and it's going for $5,000, and it still has about a week left to go on that one. And that's that's amazing to me that that Saab is bringing that kind of money. Um, also, on Cars and Bids, which is uh, Doug DeMuro's uh, fun yep. site to uh, sell vehicles on, uh, there is a 2011 Saab 94 X Aero which is uh, powered by the 2.8 liter fabled V6. And that vehicle is going for currently uh, 8,500 um, with uh, I think about five days left on, no, six days left on this one. So a lot of, uh, a lot of sobs are going up in price that we're seeing, especially the nicer examples, obviously, but it's, it's really generating a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of recognition, and people are starting to realize that, Hey, sob, Sobs aren't being made anymore, and uh, these cars are uh, getting a little more valuable as time goes on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but nothing tops uh, the price that this particular Saab brought. So, <laughs> absolutely. Here is this 1975 uh, Saab wagon, and look at that price. It sold on Bring a Trailer for $31,000 back Oof. in February of this year. That's a big price. And uh, I love this. Uh, I love this comment. Uh, check this out here. Holy smokes, $31,000. I love it, but know nothing of them and had no idea this would go for that high. Congrats to seller and buyer. And, and this comment right here goes to show you how many people still are not familiar with Saab as much as we are. And people have no idea about these, this brand. Yeah, you know what? And I, I really didn't know a lot about this car either. And then then we're at the uh, Saab Owners Convention there in Albany, New York, right? And um, mm -hmm. I see this car, recognized it immediately, mm -hmm. and stopped and talked to the new owner. And uh, he is Greg Smith, and he joins us from his home in Albany. Greg, glad you're with us tonight. Well, Thanks, Greg. For me. Thanks for having me. You have a very, very special car, so I'm eager to, to learn more about it. But let's, before we get to the car itself, uh, for folks who don't know you, tell us about your Saab background. You, you ran a, a Saab dealership. Yes. Uh, our family has what's now a 72-year-old business, uh, which I just retired from. Uh, we've done Saabs for probably the last 30 or 35 years, uh, mostly selling uh, lease returns. Uh, we were turned into a Saab only facility. Mm -hmm. We only had Saabs for sale. Um, and, and when the, when Saab was finished, uh, we started selling the, the port cars before we came in LSC. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to get in through Ally, which was the bank and auction company that <laughs> held these cars in Newark. Mm -hmm. And we were able to buy you know, over three dozen of them um, at auction to sell to our loyal Saab customers, which was kind of a unique thing because, um, you know, I hadn't gotten my OSC yet. I knew it was probably in the offing, but was, it, I was the only one there, you know, last month standing type of thing. And uh, they sold us these cars um, 
and we just started selling them as new, and they didn't have warranties. Uh, but Saab awesome. had, Sob had the uh, extended warranty package that they were selling, and every car I sold, I sold a warranty on. So with Saab, so it was kind of neat. So I found some pictures of these orphan Sobs, the leftover Sobs that were sitting there at the port mm -hmm. in oh, New yeah. Jersey. Uh, and so here's some of the shots of what that looked like. You know, I was talking to Mark a moment ago and saying, look at the back end of these Saab 95s. They mm -hmm. are, that design holds up today, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It absolutely and, does. And so how many of these cars were you able to sell? I sold uh, just a, a tad over three dozen of them. 36, um, huh? The first one I bought was a uh, was a base model 956 speed mm -hmm. that, that had four miles on it. <laughs> and <laughs> Newark's not that far from Albany, so I bought the car. So I paid paid twenty one thousand dollars for it. I was so excited to get the car that we jumped in the car and we drove to Newark to pick it up. And mm -hmm. the guy at the uh, you know the port was just like, "You're gonna drive the car out of here?" I'm like, "Yep." And he's like, well, "They don't have any gas at all," you know. <laughs> <laughs> we literally we made it to the gas station but got gas in the car we started up the throughway to come back to albany and i realized that the suspension is still torqued down on this car <laughs> and still had the bumps you know when they put it on the ship oh mm -hmm. yeah and uh so that was a that was a long night a long ride home right it was not good but uh it was great but those cars sat outside for a, over a year and a half before wow. they were sold, huh. but they were brand new cars. And then did every one of them found a home, right? Every single one. Yep. That's wow. awesome. And do they have any, you know, at, at, at $21,000, was that a deal for you? Was that a great price or just kind of, well, I thought it was a steal. Um, but I bought, I also bought a 2011 arrow. Nine, right. Oh no. Uh, $29,000. So, Thankfully, I had uh, already sold the stick shift, but the stick shift was just a rare card to begin with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple of 9 3Xs, a um, ton of 9 3s, ton of 9 3s. That's good. So the last, the last of the sobs passed through your hands, and now you've got a sob that uh, set a record. So your $31,000 sob. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty interesting. So you kind of took some of the sob profits and put it back to work, huh? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Always keep it, keep it moving. Yeah. So tell us about this car. Well, uh, this car is a. Uh, it spent most of its life in Lapland, Sweden. Uh, it was owned by the original owner, which was a, a woman who lived to be 103, as the story goes. Wow. And it's. Um, she preserved this car. She used it. It's got about 72 or so thousand miles on it. But she used the car um, all the time, and she she kept like a little diary of her excursions in the car when she took it out. And um, I've translated a few of them. Of course, I'm not prepared, nor was I at the convention with these documents. But uh, they do exist, and it, it's just hilarious to read what she wrote about her love for the car and mm -hmm. where she was going that day and what the temperature was. And always parked inside, always indoors lapland is northern it's very very cold up there in the winter time so it has a block heater um everything's complete uh, the paint is original it has some touch-ups on it um but it's just a nice original legit car and you can tell when you drive it um you know the transmission doesn't whine it doesn't do the things it doesn't leak oil um mm -hmm. upholstery is all original Carpeting, mats, everything's all original to the car. Um, and it's just a, it's it's a love. And when I saw the car, I bring a trailer. Mm -hmm. I had previously sold a 67 95 wagon. Mm -hmm. And it gave me the, the guts to buy this car. And ironically, at the convention, I had the privilege of meeting my backup bidder, which is kind of an interesting nice. conversation. A nice gentleman. I think he said he was from Connecticut. And uh, I thanked him for that they stopped bidding, you know, because I wasn't, yeah. wasn't going to stop bidding. But yeah. I could tell Thanks. him that after the auction. You know. Thanks you know, for saving me some money. <laughs> yeah. You know, Greg, I wanted to ask you something real quick. One thing that kind of chimes me about this vehicle, you said that original this, original that. And we were talking a little bit over sure. 
before the show, you said that this whole car is original. There's no brand new motor. There's no yeah. no brand. A lot of all this is original, original yeah. paint, original parts. That's fascinating, especially with this car being oh god, from 1975. I mean, we're approaching 40 years old on this guy. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. It's absolutely amazing that the care that this woman put into this car. I have the original keys, which is just phenomenal. Wow. I mean, oh, wow. um, and that she used the car. I mean, it's not it's not like it's a garage queen or a trailer queen. Yeah. This car was used. Um, it has it has a uh, road rash like chips on the on, underneath the headlights and whatnot mm -hmm. um, that shows signs of use. There isn't a blister on this car anywhere. And at the convention, I had several people who asked if they could, you know, uh, photograph under the dash, under the hood, you know, for reference, um, right. what cars they're redoing. And I'm like, absolutely, help yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time cap. Out, take the rugs out, do whatever you want. And yeah. because it's, it's rare that we don't, you know, we don't find them in this condition. And of course, buying it on Bring a Trailer, I was relying on the seller who turned out to be a very honest person because there were no surprises with this car. And you know, just a lot of good pictures. And I'm like, it's about as good as it's going to get. Oh, wow. For one of these. And yeah. So this is the, uh, this is the, this is the V4 that's in that car, right? Correct. And do you know what its horsepower is? I believe it's 65 or 68. Huh. It <laughs> is the 87. Wow. You know, the, the question that pops up in my mind, Greg, is that, uh, you know, we have vehicles in New England in the Northeast here in the United States, and, you know, we get snowy weather, and uh, unfortunately, those salty roads just tear these cars apart. Right. I mean, what are the people in Sweden doing that we're not, that they, <laughs> they can have a vehicle in this condition that's almost 40 years old? That, that still boggles the mind. The only thing I did to this car when I got it was I, I pressure washed the undercarriage. And the 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 plate underneath the engine, mm -hmm. um, and that was full of you know like dried oil, but it was also full of like dirt and small small rocks. Mm -hmm. And I blew all that stuff out of there to reveal you know almost a flawless um, engine pan. Oh and wow! So I, I would imagine they don't use salt out there because that was my biggest fear of having this car shipped, uh, you know, from California, and and. And not knowing if it has rust, if the floor yeah. plates have been replaced, and, and that's why I really what I reached out and thanked the person who sold it to me, and I said, um, you know, kudos for being an honest man because you know I I paid I paid the money for the car, but it was everything I thought I was getting, which was just amazing. Yeah, awesome. thirty one thousand. You paid all the money for this car, so, <laughs> and and that brought along with it, uh, you had this on display at SOC. The this the picture on your screen there is mm -hmm. the Saab bomber jacket. Now, yes. people were fascinated with this. Tell me about this bomber jacket. Well, in the listing on Bring a Trailer, um, it belonged to the woman who owned the car. Um, she bought it. It has in one of the pockets is like a little pamphlet that you open up. And it's a, uh, it tells you all about it. It says Saab Scania on it, the whole, the whole nine yards. Um, it's a woman's European medium, which is quite small. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't try it on. But, uh, but a friend of mine at the, uh, at the convention was studying the jacket. He's a very perceptive person. And he told me, he goes, this, there's a 9,000 on that jacket. Um, a picture of a 9,000 towards the bottom of the uh, bomber jacket. So I kind of reached out to the seller who reached out to the grandson where he got the car. And, you know, we asked, trying to find out when that jacket was purchased. Uh, was it 10 years after the car, 11 years, whatever. Um, but it is, it, it's in fantastic shape. Um, it doesn't show any signs of ever being worn. It had a hanger on it, which you'd find in an older woman's closet, you know, the, like the padded hanger with a mm -hmm. face on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a unique thing that it came with the car. And it's just a kind of a very cool, you know, thing that you usually don't get when you get a car. Like this. Sure. Well, and you've got, you know, I see a, a whole binder full of, are those repair records or what was in that binder there? Uh, to the left of the jacket is uh, some tools. Okay. Uh, complete tools. Every one of them has the sob barking on it. Um, the green binder in the center is a binder that she had made up 
it embossed on the on the thing. It says 1975 Slob with the VIN number. Hmm. Um, the one to the right of it just has some other booklets and stuff in it. Nothing, but in the in the glove box was the original service book, and uh, and a, like a somewhat of a manual, you know. <laughs> but, all in a different language. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. And these soccer ball wheels are just, those are so great, aren't they? Those they are. are cool. And to, from what I was told when I bought the car, that those were bought as an accessory when she bought the car new, because the mm -hmm. spare tire is a steel wheel. Mm -hmm. um, oh, nice. But the rack and the wheels were bought as accessories from the dealer she bought the car from in 1975. So they're at the SOC. I asked you to fire it up and... Uh, and you know, I'm just a sucker for these these headlight washers. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I had the steam in operation. And isn't that just too cool? <laughs> That's me. What a kick. It's amazing that they still work and the washers work. Oh wow. I'm still a teenager at heart, I guess, if that That's right. amuses me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hey, let's uh let's talk a little bit about um about the driving experience. So here's the uh, the driving video from Bring a Trailer. I just grabbed it right off YouTube from yep. those guys. Uh, so it's four on the tree, right? Four on the tree. Uh, to the left side of the column is a is a hand choke, uh, which is oh. pretty needable. You really need to use it until the car's fully warmed up. Um, but once it's warmed up, it's perfect. Um, but no like gearbox noise, no issues with shifting. Mm -hmm. No chattery clutch, no nothing like that, and uh, it just drives. You know, I've had a lot of these wagons, and this is by far the best driving, best handling, um, the best one I've had. Um, I take it on the New York State Thruway, which was a you know a interstate highway. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in kilometers, but I'm doing you know like 100, 110 kilometers, so I'm thinking I'm doing about 65 miles an hour possibly. Yeah, and. Uh, and people just, you know, I pass some people and people pass me and thumbs up. Every person is looking at the car, I'm sure. <laughs> which is just, you know. It's funny because I bet people who see this car are giving you a thumbs up. Yet I'm wondering how many of these people know exactly what it is. Exactly. <laughs> that is true. Um, one day I was driving it to work on a Saturday and uh, my cell phone rang and uh, it was a buddy of mine who, uh, who who tows Teslas to New York City to be repaired. And uh, he goes, is that you in that green wagon? I'm like, well, who the hell else would it be? It's just yeah. so stupid. <laughs> and he goes, is that a Volvo? And I'm like, no, it's not a Volvo. So like a week later, he came to look at the car. And he was amazed at the condition. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen these. And I'm like, isn't that funny? After all these years, there are still people around that haven't seen one or don't know what a 95 or 96 is. You know. Yeah. So we're going to see here in just a moment. Uh, they, they activate the free wheeling feature. Now, can you describe for us what that is? Free wheeling is, is most usually used in a downhill um, scenario, um, like a coast almost. Um, there's pros and cons to free wheel. You know, I, I've heard of engines overheating, um, but the car just will, you know, it takes it out of gear basically and lets it just gravity drive the car. I see. So it's it's essentially the same as just shifting in neutral or putting your foot on the clutch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it literally disengages the transmission from the engine. So we save in fuel? Is that what the Saab yeah. guys were thinking? It's fuel, and it's more of, you know, like a little quirky Saab thing that, you right. know, it's yeah. a feature, you know? It's funny, Saab admitted hypermyeline before hypermyeline was a thing. That's right. <laughs> you got it. That's exactly right. How about that? Okay, so you've got $31,000 into this car. How are you going to use it? What are you doing with it? Well, actually, I have more than that in it because I had that. I had to pay Bring a Trailer their fee. Oh, that's I had right. I a closed shipper almost $2,000. So. Wow. Um, I'm going to use the car. Um, I'm not going to use it in wet weather. Uh, I don't know if you saw the Barron's article about uh, yeah. the convention. Um, I was putting it on the trailer when that gentleman showed up, and uh, I just wanted to get it indoors. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, I don't like that car to get wet. And I don't yeah, like the sun to beat on it for three days either. So, um, so it was. Uh, he's 
he just really loved the car as as everybody who saw the car just loved it yeah but he did make a comment that you know i do drive it but i don't drive it in inclement weather and then he said based on the condition he could understand why yeah um it's just a, it's a fun car i live in a very small village along the hudson river and it's a it's a car i'll take out you know bring it down to the park and run my dog or whatever and uh people are just that is the coolest car it, we have an ice cream shop on our main street and the, and the girl has used the car for parked in front of her shop for advertising and you know photo opportunity. that's pretty cool yeah. so uh what would it t how fat is the check i'm writing to get you away from this car uh it's gonna start with a number five and it's gonna be <laughs> <five digits. Okay. laughs> i can say just just for conversation probably 55 would probably pry it out of my head okay well okay well now the internet knows so who knows if you, if you go on the uh, nada special uh the classic and special interest uh, book uh these the 95 wagons are up to almost fifty thousand now for high value oh wow, wow. Uh, and they're just over 29,000 for average value. So um, they're creeping up and, and bring a trailer is, is a perfect testament, not just to this car, but to almost every sob that you see on there does mm -hmm. a, a silly amount of money. Um, you know, whether it's a, a yellow uh, nine, three convertible with 122,000 yeah. miles on it, that brought crazy money, what I thought, but, um, yeah. but if a car is preserved properly, and and maintain properly uh it, do, it doesn't appear that people on bring a trailer really care how many miles are yeah yeah when i, I think first found this car when i first found this car i thought the miles were original i'm like oh my god it's got to be original and uh but it's not it's it's 127,000 kilometers oh so it's rolled over once yeah it's well the kilometers oh okay we have to convert oh, that to miles Hey guys, uh, we are, uh, chat is open. If you've got a question you'd like to ask Greg about the car, a comment, go ahead and uh, use the chat feature there and we'll share it with everybody. Uh, and uh, love to have any questions that you have get answered. Hey, and by the way, uh, you know, I hate to sound like one of those YouTube guys, but uh, you know, hit the thumbs up or the like button. It really, it that helps spread the program more broadly and lets people know something cool has happened over here and to come by and take a look. So if you wouldn't mind giving us a like or a thumbs up, that would be that would be great. Uh, this material is it's kind of funny. It's a it's it, it what is this? It's almost like a foamy plastic. It's not vinyl. It's not what is that? It's the same material they used in the. Uh the Saab 99, it's a, it's a, it's a very soft cloth um, slash corduroy. It's very, you know, very tight. It's not, you know, fuzzy or anything. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple of 99s that had that same material in it. It seems to wear like iron as does all Saab cloth interiors. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if the 74 had that or if it had the two tone or 73. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, I had a 7599, which had the exact same material on the seats and the same color, too. <laughs> and this was, yeah. the, this was the last year for the third row, I think I read somewhere. Is that right? Yes. Yep. The car was built until 1980 um, in Sweden. Um, it, it's funny because uh, this car, when I first got it, you have to put it in reverse to get the key out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it has, and it has a fastened seatbelt light, which is the first I've ever seen on you know, one of these 95s or 96s. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, uh, you know, as the car got newer, so to speak. And I just love that those original Vintags and color plate is uh, untouched. You know, it's still in good shape. It's completely readable. Um, just a lot of cool things about the car that I just fell in love with. And is that is that what really drew you to the car? Is it just it's, it's such a just such a time capsule is in so yeah. unique or is there something else? I'm a sucker for originality. Um, I, I, I had a restored Saab wagon just like this mm -hmm. a 67 and it was, it was restored, but it was restored using like Mercedes uh, interior, like cloth or vinyl, the MB Tex. It was painted a Mercedes color. It was a fantastic car. I mean, it was a, it was perfection all mm -hmm. the way around, but it wasn't original. And when I see an original car, I'm like, 
this is the way, you know, but, you know, I'm old enough to know when these cars were new. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, this is the way they came, you know, and nobody's like put their own touch on it or anything. It's just with the exception of the battery and the tires. <laughs> but uh, That brings up a good point because when it really determines what kind of collector is going to be looking into these vehicles. Yeah. So, for example, for your particular vehicle, Greg, uh, someone as yourself who appreciates originality, that's going to be for that particular, uh, I guess, yeah. style of person who wants to go for that. Yeah. There's also going to be a lot of, and I'm sure you've seen this with other popular auto auctions, but people are doing things like resto mods and they're doing like um, restorations that they incorporate sure. newer technologies and so forth. So I know there's a, a wide variety of people out there who appreciate vehicles in different stages of, uh, of creation, of course. Um, I'm wondering if we're going to start seeing sobs that have uh, newer technology or uh, more intricate or interesting things done to them. Well, future is going to be full of interesting surprises, I think. <laughs> There's a lot of creative people out there who put their personal touches on these cars, and it's mm -hmm. I'm definitely not against that. Um, you know, but I, I really, I am just the biggest sucker for original car <laughs> unrestored. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was just looking at the that photo of the fuel filler door that just was up there. What yeah. is that symbol? That is a Saab symbol on there. If you go back to it, I'm trying to get there. It uh, that says Saab on it. Oh, because it looks like a little hand. Oh, it, you're right. It does. I don't know. Huh. I know there's a key for it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've got the you've got the coolest uh, roof rack as well. It's it's got Saab branding all over it and. Uh, that was a pretty expensive option to try and find, I understand. Yeah. I, from the people from uh, Bring a Trailer who I've connected with from buying this car um, told me that the roof rack is just a complete unicorn. And it's some people have never seen it. Uh, one guy made me an offer on it. And I'm like, I don't think I should sell. I don't think I should take this lady's car apart at this point. I'm like, <laughs> supposed to take care of it, not sell it off for yep. cars. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, I'm, it's in my stewardship now, and I'm not going to take it apart. Um, so, you know, that's interesting. You told me that uh, at SOC that uh, you really, this car is in your care. You you think of it as kind of like a mobile museum piece. Oh, yeah. It's like buying an old house. You know, you're the, you're the steward of, the, of the, this car, and it's your responsibility to keep it original, preserve it, and keep it maintained mm -hmm. just the way you got it. And if I ever sell it, and I'm going to sell it to the person who's going to continue that, not somebody who's going to be, you know, oh, my wife should think it needs a paint job. You know, it's like, no, you don't paint that car. Right? Yeah. You'll ruin it. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to wrap it. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so <laughs> I think that's a good point to wrap things up. Uh, you know what? I am so glad that we connected there at SOC, got to meet you I and, and see your fantastic car. Uh, what a, what a great little time capsule for all of us. And uh, yeah, congratulations. Good on you for, for taking stewardship of this car. And I know it's going to be in good hands. Is it going with you to North Carolina? Oh, you bet. You bet. I do have other cars, but they're not Saabs. I have a few other collectibles that I have that um, will eventually make their way to uh, North Carolina. I don't have a two-car garage. so it's like, And once I sell my shop, I won't have any work but anything. So um, well. it, it will be with me. It has a... It's own aluminum trailer, which is uh, brand new, with aluminum wheels on it, and uh, it loves to ride up on top of that. So that's kind of <laughs> well, that's great. Well, man, I appreciate your time. Thank you for being with us and sharing us the story of your car. It's great to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. You bet. See you, Greg. Okay, guys. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yep. Wasn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Now, what a great car. This this gives me hope that. Uh, Saab is going to be continuing to appreciate that the brand is going to live on. I mean, stories like this absolutely give me confidence that we're going to be carrying Saab into the future. And uh, I feel really good about it. Um, just seeing just seeing the, a Saab of this example actually being in our presence. I saw it in person up at the Saab Owners Convention. Man, it was amazing to see firsthand. It really was. Yeah, it was a real time capsule. I didn't have the guts to ask Greg to let me drive it, but uh, <laughs> that'd be a rip, wouldn't it? That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> right? Oh, goodness.
All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks for joining us again this week. Share this program around. Tell other Saab guys about it. Uh, and help the world learn more about these crazy cars that we all love so much. Mark, I will see you next week. See you next week. And hopefully uh, we're going to keep on bringing the enthusiasm, sharing the Saab brand, and letting more people know about Saab because we want to keep Saab alive. That's right. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. All right. See ya. Thank you.